Hello, I'm Walter Berger, an application engineer at Walter Machines. In this video, my colleague Mark Franklin and I show you how an automatic tailstock is fitted and adjusted on our machines. The tailstock is mounted on the traveling servo table. The length position of the workpiece is measured with the probe. Then the tailstock unit is moved with the X3 axis a little bit before the calculated end position. Now the tailstock arm is swiveled upwards and the tip is moved to the front of the workpiece. Then the grinding starts. Here we simulate fluid grinding. The tailstock is used to prevent the flexion of the tool from the grinding wheel and vibration caused during grinding, especially on tools with relatively small diameters. It also eliminates the problem of run out caused by deflection and vibration. A tailstock is probably used for the production or regrinding of rings. Now we will show the setup of the tailstock. For this the C-axis is turned into the direction of the door and the tailstock is placed on the servo table. Using two Allen screws and Kiwi blocks the steady rest unit is placed on the contact surface and fixed. Now the sensor and the pneumatic cables are connected to the machine. The next step is to select the tailstock, define it and determine its position. To do this, we first open the tool to the server and start the reference wizard, which is found under the control center. Under the tab C axis platform, we now select tailstock and enter the length and diameter of the bin. The next step is add-ons reference. Here the basic position of the servo table is entered, which has determined during the basic measurement of the machine, as well as some other parameters concerning the X3 axis. Of interest to us is the determination of the X position, which will be shown as next. After the automatic servo table has been moved to the defined measuring position, the probe pole is moved manually to the contact surface of the pin in order to determine the length position and enter it to the reference menu. After blank with the center has been climbed that has no or only a small run out error, two dial gauges placed on the workpiece in order to be able to set the horizontal and vertical position of the tailstock. The tailstock arm is moved upwards and moved to the workpiece with X3 in such a way that the tip fits into the tool center with tension. The horizontal position is adjusted with the sideways adjustment screw and the vertical position with the upper adjustment screw. Once the adjustment is complete, the tip is fixed with the climbing screws on the back side of the tailstock arm. Further details on adjusting the tailstock can be found in the documentation. Once the adjustments are complete, you can make the settings in the workpiece IDM. Here you can see the procedure as at the beginning of the video as a simulation. settings are made in the table zero axis x3 setup. The basic selection is made in the column coupling type. Parking means that the tailstock is not used and is swiveled to the parking position. Down or up axis position defines whether the tailstock should be in an entered x3 axis position down or up. Fixed down, fixed up defines the position in relation of the workpiece face. Linked is not situable for the tailstock. This function can be used when you're using a steady rest. The bending 
On the selection, different entries are possible here. Approach Up defines whether the tailstock should be set during the approach and repositioning movements or not. For more information about our software, machines, trainings and customer care, please visit our homepage. Join us again soon.